All right, so <clears throat> very brief uh, summary of expected utility theory. Uh, normally in you know, intermediate micro or many other micro macro courses, uh, the alternatives, well, the decision makers are choosing alternatives, right? If it is a consumer theory, he's choosing a bundle of goods. If it is a production, the firm is choosing how much output to produce and how much inputs to choose. Uh, so these are all uh, alternatives, right? But the thing is, uh, we intrinsically, we never mentioned this, but we intrinsically assume that uh, all these alternatives are deterministic, meaning alternative is equivalent to outcome. Is equivalent to outcome. What do we mean by this? Well, let's suppose uh, you're consumer and uh, you're, you're choosing two goods, apple and banana, right? Uh, so normally what we consider the, cons uh, the, the decision problem as like how many apples, how many bananas I should buy given the prices and given my income and my, of course, preferences or utility function. But the thing is, the apple, the alternative is also the outcome, right? But in fact, it is not. I mean, they're not really the same thing. I mean, I choose an apple, yes. But the thing is, I want good, juicy apple. And the thing is, before tasting it, I probably cannot know whether this apple is a good apple that I was looking for or a bad apple, which I don't want to buy, right? So there is some uncertainty about the quality of the good that I'm going to buy, right? Or if you buy something some product on Amazon or eBay, whatever, there's always an uncertainty whether you're going to like this good or not. Uh, if it is, for example, a shoes, you don't know if it is going to fit. If it is, I don't know, anything else, you don't know uh, whether it's going to be delivered on time or whether it's going to be late. If it is late, if, if you knew that it is going to be late, you probably don't want to buy it or buy it from somebody else, right? So therefore, the alternatives almost always in real life uh, sort of include some level of uncertainty, all right? So the outcome, I mean, is, is that depends on sort of, you know, what the true state of the world will be. Maybe the seller is an, is an, is an, is an unethical seller and so he doesn't care about, you know, the, uh, keeping the promise, so therefore the delivery is gonna be too late. Uh, or maybe he's a very prompt seller, you don't know that. Obviously, there are ways to reduce your uncertainty, like, for example, checking the reviews of the seller, etc., etc. But, I mean, again, it's like there are a lot of other uncertainties that's going to affect the outcome. So, therefore, whenever we talk about uncertainty, uh, we basically mean uh, let's incorporate uh, potential outcomes into the alternative itself. All right. So therefore, in uh, expected utility theory, or well, later you'll see in the game theory, what we do, uh, when a decision maker chooses an alternative or an action, in game theory, it's going to be called action, uh, he or she actually chooses something, all right, like Apple. But the thing is, the outcomes may vary. It could be, for example, good apple, it could be bad apple, it could be a bunch of other things, all right? So that is sort of the way we started uh, the, the, the theory. Uh, remember, so there was a set of outcomes, and then, uh, so each set of outcomes are probable, all right? So therefore, an, an action, an alternative, which we basically call it lottery, is nothing but a probability distribution over those outcomes. That's it, all right? So basically, if you buy an apple from grocery store one at a price whatever, well, it, it, well the, the, the likelihood that this apple is gonna be good is let's say more than one half, and the likelihood that it's gonna be bad apple is less than one half, all right? Why is that? Well, because this is a fancy grocery shop and they usually sell fresh and good stuff. And then there's another grocery store, let's say, it's a cheaper grocery store, all right? And so the likelihood that the apple is actually gonna be a good apple is less than one half, etc. So therefore, when you choose an action, should I buy it from grocery store one, the fancy grocery store, or a regular grocery store? All right? These are two alternatives I have. I am, in fact, comparing potential outcomes, all right? So the question is, it's not just apple, it is, in fact, the outcomes that I care, but there is the uncertainty. So how am I going to incorporate this uncertainty into my decision problem? So 
uh, the formalization again start with the lottery so in the very simple environment we call or we denote lottery something like p we're going to use p a lot to denote probability but again lottery is a probability distribution over outcomes so assuming that we have n outcomes all right outcome one for example uh, and this is this corresponds to outcome n so these are probabilities that each outcome will occur all right so each pi is in fact a number in between 0 and 1 so they can't be more than 1 they can't be less than 0 so that's sort of the definition of probability but that's not enough the summation over pi i from 1 to n right when i add all those probabilities the probability should be equal to 1 right the apple is either good or bad there's well i mean there might be third sort of semi good semi bad whatever whatever but uh, so all those potential outcomes their probabilities must add up to one no more no less so this is what lottery is so therefore uh, our set of alternatives is basically uh, 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 what we call a simplex or all potential lotteries on the set of outcomes right as as simple as this so I'm going to skip, you know, all these uh, axioms or uh, assumptions like transitivity, this and that, uh, independence axiom, etc. I think the lecture notes are just fine for those. But uh, how do we, so if I have a lottery P, okay, so what is the, remember, so P is an apple from grocery, fancy grocery store. So it is in fact like P1, so with some P1 probability, apple is going to be good. P2 probability, Apple is going to be bad. Pn probability, well, uh, Apple is going to be whatever, something, right? Organic, non-organic, whatever. So uh, let's suppose this is the lottery and I would like to calculate how much utility I'm going to get out of this lottery. So if my preferences over lottery satisfy some axioms according to von Neumann and Morgenstern theorem, there should exist some U function which basically maps each outcome into a real number, all right, small u, and then you should capital u, or sometimes uh, my capital u and small u may be confusing. Instead of capital u, small u, I'm gonna put eu, so it's the expected utility of this lottery is therefore uh, just the expectation expected utility right as the name suggests so it basically is what is the utility of outcome one let's call it a one all right so this is outcome one it's like good apple all right so what is your utility if in fact the apple is the good apple well but remember it occurs with probability p1 so i'm going to multiply its probability with the utility you're going to get from this apple plus Probability of the second event, uh, for example, the apple is bad. Well, what would be your utility if the apple is in fact bad? All right, so this is outcome two. All right, probably uh, your utility is going to be very low here. Probably it's going to be very high here. So therefore, uh, your expected utility is going to be very high if P1 is high as well. But if P1 is very low, your total expected utility will lower. So therefore, your total utility or expected utility will be will depend not only on how much you care or like apples good apple bad apple but it but it also depends on the probability of each those outcomes occurring all right so you always want to go and buy the good from the grocery store that likely very likely sells a good apple and so on so p n u of a n so this is Sometimes we just write it as follows i from 1 to n pi ui or u of small u of ai. Okay, so that's basically how we calculate the expected utility of a lottery. As simple as this. Any question?